I came across this story and I'm very thankful for whomever sent it. They utilized my email. I'm definitely grateful. And this story really broke my heart for a lot of different reasons. I'm probably going to have some opinions that are not going to sit well with your sensibilities. I'm going to get on to some people, including the biological mother. But I think that once you hear a little bit of the background, you'll truly understand and you won't get mad about my opinion. But if this is your first time here, I have to give you a disclaimer. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. And let me pause it right there and let me give a special shout out. Thank you to my friend and your friend, Sarah Gates, who is just absolutely amazing and donated channel memberships. And it what the way it works is depending on how many you want to donate, it'll randomly select people. So I'm going to read the names that were selected. And Tanea, you were actually one of them. So now you have a channel membership by way of Sarah Gates. So thank you. Jess, J-E-S-S, you now have a channel membership. Donna Young, you now have a channel membership. Jessica McDonald, you now have a channel membership. And Melinda Martinez, you now have a channel membership. So those are five people that were gifted channel memberships. All you got to do is just say thank you to Sarah Gates. Much love, Sarah Gates. Thank you, thank you, thank you for doing that. Definitely appreciate it. Let's go ahead and talk about this story. <clears throat> I want you guys to take a look at this angel that is on my screen and the life that she lived is a life that she did not deserve. This baby deserved the world and could have grown up to become anything. And I was highly, highly upset to the point that I was very emotional when I read this story. It make you want to cry. It make you angry. It make you want to hurt something, break something. But the story I got from people.com, the website. So thank you very much for this article. So let me back this picture up before I talk about that evil person that you guys see there. This angel that you guys see on my screen, I want to have a solo shot of her here. Her name is Zoe Felix, Z-O-E-Y Felix, F-E-L-I-X. She was five years old and her death has many outraged and wondering why more wasn't done to protect the Kansas child after multiple concerns were raised regarding her living conditions, which y'all are not. If y'all didn't look this story up, you are not going to believe this. ABC News, the Associated Press, which is the AP and KCTV5 report that welfare officials with the Kansas Department of Children and Families investigated Zoe and her family multiple times within the 13 months leading up to her rape and death. I'm not going to say that word very often, but it is in the context of this story, but gruesome detail, citing a report from the Kansas Department of Children and Families. Her family declined to help her family declined help from the agency on several occasions. Let me say that again. The family declined help. They needed help. People reached out. Somebody saw something, said something, and they said, no, we're good. We don't want your help. So I want you all to keep that in mind. According to KCTV, the agency re received nine reports involving Zoe, with six of those assigned for further investigation. The documents date back to September 2022, which shows you guys there was a lot of time that they had to save this baby. For September 2022 for reports of offenses such as poor conditions in the home and possible drug use in the presence of a child. In other instances, the agency was called to investigate claims of lack of supervision and Zoe's mother was arrested for driving under the influence while Zoe was in the front seat of the car. Keep in mind, she's about four to five years old. According to the outlet, her mother pleaded guilty to felony aggravated battery and driving under the influence. Following the, following the alleged drunk driving incident, Zoe was placed in police protective custody, but reunited with her father that same evening. So she has a father. That's why even more of this is going to get. It's not going to make any sense at all. 
On October the 2nd, Zoe was killed. An individual that is less than a human being. This mf -er right here, by the name of Michael, M-I-C-K-E-L, middle name W, last name Cherry, 25 years stupid, I mean 25 years old, an unhoused resident of Topeka, so he's homeless, was booked into the Shawnee County Jail in connection with her death in less than 24 hours. At the time, the Topeka Police Department said Cherry was known to the victim. KWCH12 reported that he lived in the same homeless camp as her family. So he was familiar with her. Cherry has since been charged with first degree murder, rape and capital murder. Our office has been appointed to represent Mr. Cherry in his capital murder case. A team of attorneys have been assigned to handle the criminal matter. Mark Manna of the Kansas Death Penalty Defense Unit told people in a statement, but declined to comment further on the case. Zoe's exact cause of death has not been yet revealed. Our society's collective failure to support and protect Zoe is heartbreaking and unconscionable. A person by the name of Shakti Belway, executive director at the National Center for Youth Law, said in a statement obtained by the AP. How was that child not removed? It doesn't make any sense. In a statement shared by Kansas DCF Secretary Laura Howard, she claimed her agency was fully committed to conducting a thorough review of Zoe's case. And I'm going to tell you guys how it got to this point. It's not going to make any sense if DCF was actually doing their job. This should have never have come to this. We're also going to talk about that GoFundMe, and I don't want to forget about that. And I think I have another screenshot here that I want to talk about also. Saved in my pictures, but we'll get back to it here in just a second. Let me make sure. Yep. Let me see. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll get, okay, we'll get back to that here in a moment. I think we can skip some of this. They're talking about the law. Okay, so let's go ahead. And as you guys can see, that's the criminal complaint. But let me show you guys this because I've talked about this before. As you guys can see from this picture on my screen, this is a screenshot from a website, a screenshot from a website that was featuring how involved. We need to be very, very careful before we start just throwing money into a GoFundMe account because we've not done any research. There might be criminal prosecution or there might be somebody trying to collect money off of a child that don't deserve it, which is we call hashtag babies for benefits. There was a GoFundMe that was put up. And that GoFundMe was taken down because the funeral home covered the cost of Zoe's burial. So the people were refunded, which is great. That's a great thing. I don't know exactly the amount that was the uh, original GoFundMe was put up, but here is a screenshot as well. Give me a moment. I don't know why my stream is tripping. I don't know what else I could possibly do. But. I don't know. That's why I hate this internet sometimes. Yep, it's skipping. It's skipping. I don't know what the problem is. I don't know. I don't know. But we got to get through this. So. This GoFundMe was put up by an individual by the name of Justin Ludi. And I'm assuming, I think they said that this was the biological father. But there was a GoFundMe that was put up and they had to disable it and, ev and everybody got their money back. But you can see there was an actual GoFundMe that was put up sometime around a month ago. Okay. Now, here's something that that news report didn't talk about what I thought was weird was that the mother apparently had a place, some type of roof over her head, some type of uh, place where she could sleep at night. I don't know if it was a house. I don't really know, but 
the mother kicked her daughter out. The mother kicked her daughter out. <coughs> What's going on, guys? Can y'all not hear me? What's up, Elissa Deeds? I don't know what's going on. I guess I can. can y'all hear me? That this was the biological father. But there was a GoFundMe that was put up. Yeah, it did. Whoa. That this was. The Wow, that's weird. I don't know what's going on. You can hear me? I don't know what's going on. I'm going to try my best to keep this going. I don't know what's going on. I can definitely see that the stream is low. That's why I hate my internet provider. God, dope. Court records of... Wow, that's weird. I don't know what's going on. You can hear me? Let me just try to get through this the best that I can. I don't really know what the issue is. I'm not streaming in any higher resolution than I ever have, so I don't know what the problem is. What the hell? Hold on, let me see. Yep, so my internet download speed is not working. Okay, which is not good, but the upload speed is not great either. Oh, goodness. Yeah, that's not good. Oh, I don't know, but let's, let's finish talking about this. So some type of way, this little girl was kicked out of the place that she was living, which is really weird that, yes, her mom threw her out. Now, I want y'all to remember that this is a five-year-old baby. This is a five-year-old baby, which is really, really weird. And on top of that, there has been many times, and the reason why CPS was called so many times was because... Um, they found this little girl out playing by herself. She was she was not monitored. She was not being watched. She was always dirty and she was always hungry. So what it was, was that whenever she'd be around other people, she would go ask them for food and then they would help clean her up. They would feed her and then they would just, I guess, let her go about her own way, which is just really, really weird. But let me give you guys the fair usage and let's try to keep this thing going. So here we go. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And if you guys would, do me a favor and please click that thumbs up. It'll share this video and let more people know where to find it. So let's go ahead and talk about this story. Here we go. Serious questions are being raised tonight in the rape and murder of a five-year-old Kansas girl. This is Zoe Felix. Yeah, neighbors say they had reported concerns about Zoe's situation for years to police and Child Protective Services, but nothing was ever done. Tonight, investigative reporter Angie Racono reports from Topeka. There is sadness and anger in Topeka. People have been dropping off flowers and stuffed animals at this makeshift memorial. It's near the field where little Zoe was found. And just steps away appears to be her last known location where she lived, a tent in the woods. I'm trying not to cry, you guys. Um, but it just, you know. What do you say when a child is raped and murdered? Um, I've honestly just been sick. Disgusting. Little Zoe Felix lived right next door, and neighbors say she struggled. Like, hey, there's no water at my house. Shaniqua Bradley and other neighbors say they tried to help. They made Zoe food, and she would get water from their house. <laughs> they were baffled that Zoe didn't go to school. Zoe has been on her own this entire time. 
Most importantly, they say they reported it. I reported it, Ms. Jan reported it, Ms. Des Desiree reported it. I'm sure we all have reported several times, but nothing was ever done that I'm aware of. The most recent police welfare check was in early September. There was no power at the house. From Topeka Police, officers then met with the child who was in good spirits and apparent health. And the child was left in the care of their parent per the custodial agreement. Officers then left the scene. Neighbors describe more volatility. Then Zoe disappears. Only her mother remains in the home. Everybody was asking, where's Zoe? Hello? Zoe appears to have recently lived in this tent where we found a stuffed animal, backpack, and a pink hairbrush. It steps from where her body was found. Zoe was rushed to a nearby gas station for help. She was later pronounced dead. Suspect Michael Cherry is now in jail, booked for murder in the first degree and rape. He lists his address as homeless. Neighbors say he used to live in the same house as Zoe before they all disappeared. Oh my God, like we just seen them up here the other day. A family who dropped off flowers says they recognize Cherry. He appeared to be Zoe's babysitter as she played in a parking lot barefoot wearing an oversized shirt. Because it was real long all the way down. Zoe's dad wanted to make a trade for food. They are crushed to hear she was living in a tent and was murdered. This could have been prevented, honestly, I think. The same concern has been raised in other cases. Adrian Jones was seven years old when he was tortured, starved, and killed later fed to pigs. His DCF file was 2,000 pages. And three-year-old Olivia Jansen, she died from a brain bleed. Her body was covered in bruises. A family member reported concerns 18 days before her death. And now five-year-old Zoe Felix, apparently not going to school and living in a tent, raped and murdered. KCTV5 is pushing for DCF records for Zoe Felix. The state agency has seven days to reveal what was reported to them before she died. And that's because of a new state law created after the death of Adrian Jones. Reporting into P. Thanks, Jeremy. One man is in custody tonight as law enforcement investigates the death of a child. 24 25 year old Michael Cherry is in the Shawnee County Jail being held for rape and first degree murder in the death of five year old Zoe Felix. Cherry's bond is $2 million. Topeka police were called to a disturbance around six last night at a gas station at Southeast 29th in California. First responders found Zoe and began, began life saving measures, but she was later pronounced dead at the hospital. Authorities had this large crime scene taped off in a grassy field just north of the Dillon store there throughout the day. Cherry was booked just after four this morning. Jail officials list his address as homeless. TPD, though, said he and the child knew each other. Zoe's neighbors are heartbroken to learn what happened to her. 13th Cali Holthouse is live in Southeast Topeka Forest tonight. Cali. Yeah, I'm here just behind me. You can see one of the crime scenes where this occurred and a small memorial that's been put together in honor of Zoe Felix. Earlier today, I spoke to the neighbors who lived just across the street from the house Zoe stayed at with her mother. They're devastated to learn that despite their repeated pleas for help, Zoe still suffered this tragic fate. Neighbors of Zoe Felix say they loved the five-year-old like she was one of their own. Loving girl, questions. Loved the children. All the kids played with her. They all looked out for her. Everybody looked out for Zoe. She was a curious George. She was a curious George with nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. But despite their efforts, they say she lived a life of instability. The house she stayed in lacked utilities, and she was sometimes left home alone. No lights, no water by herself sometimes. Neighbors say they did what they could for Zoe, helping keep her bathed, clothed, and fed, even going so far as to report Felix's living conditions to local authorities. Police Chief Brian Wheelis would not confirm whether authorities had any prior contact with the family. He also... So let me comment about this part, because y'all are thinking kind of the same thing that I'm thinking, but there's a big problem with that, because y'all are saying like, other people could have just taken her in. It's like, yes and no. Like, you don't want just random people taking a child in. And I love the fact that the community mindset is to, hey, we can all help. We can all try to do something. And that part is great. 
The bad part is, is that's, you can't just put a, a baby just anywhere and everywhere. That baby needs to be in a known place and a protected place, right? And the fact that this was known, this was be notes to people. I'm going to use a big word today. Be notes to people that everybody knew where she lived. Everybody knew that this house didn't have utilities. The utilities were off. This little girl was literally going out and trying to find food and people were providing it to me. First of all, it's always a failure on the biological mother and biological father first. That's where the failure starts. But as a backup, the system failed again. And this was an easy detection. Don't y'all think? This wasn't even hard to figure out, yo, this baby can't live here. This baby needs to be in the care of the state or something. That would have been better than, than absolutely nothing. So would not comment on their relationship with the suspect. Um, the information and all the investigative evidence uh, will be compiled and sent to the district attorney's office. Neighbors say they are left devastated. It hurts. It's a tragedy. You have a death and then you have a tragedy. Hers is a tragedy. And I just experienced a tragedy. That's a tragedy. It's more than just a death. It's a tragedy. 13 News did submit a request, a Kansas Open Records Act request to the Department of Children and Families to see what, if any, investigations took place regarding Zoe Felix. Since this tragic death, lawmakers at the State House are pressing leaders at the Child Welfare Department for answers. Fox 43 News Capitol Bureau reports. Now tonight, the community and city leaders are talking about the tragedy and the little girl, Zoe, whose life was cut short. 27 News reporter Jacob Kaufman joins us. To Whenever she needed a place to go to eat, basically anything, her neighbors stepped up. Sweetest little girl ever, just looking for love. She needed love, and so we gave it to her. Everybody out here cared for her, so we call her our neighborhood daughter. And this is my granddaughter, her best friend. She just moved over here with me, so her and Zoe. It's leaving an empty feeling inside for a number of people, including city leaders. What happened to Zoe was tragic. Um, you know, I, I can't give enough praise to our police department. They quickly apprehended um, the person who did this. The monster of it was the person who did this. You know, right now, frankly, I don't care about statistics. What I care about is is what happened to this little girl. The pain runs deeper for Councilman Tony Emerson. You know, I have three daughters myself. I need to give a shout out real quick to Deborah. Deborah, last name starts with the A. Uh, you know, I won't read your whole name because I want to keep your guys' information private. So Deborah A said, thank you for what you do. Deborah, if you're listening, I'll look into the camera and tell you thank you so much. And I truly appreciate your support by way of Cash App. So if you're listening, Deborah, I want to shout you out. I want to take a pause for the cars real quick and tell you thank you. And I needed to also thank... Um, I think somebody gifted a channel membership, didn't you? Thank you again to my brother, Chris Thorne show. Appreciate you, my brother. And Dixie George, who donated a channel membership and the person that got it was Aesop's inspiration. So if you're listening, you were the recipient and also Mick Maul donated a channel membership and the recipient was Stephanie Wright. So you guys now have channel memberships that were gifted. So they're good for 30 days. So it's not end of the month. It's always 30 days. So if y'all listening, thank you. All right, let's keep going. And I just can't imagine the pain that the family's going through and that our community is going through. This is such a shock whenever you have an innocent child like this brutalized and murdered. It's just the worst thing in the world. Zoe's passing marks the 26th homicide of the year in the capital city. Mayor Michael Padilla says when it comes to crime in the city, we all can do more. I think it all boils down to how we treat each other. And that's, that's how I see uh, the rise, is that if there are people in this community who resort to violence rather than conversation and discussion. And This is KSN News 3 at... And people have more questions after the death of a five-year-old Topeka girl. How the child removal process works in Kansas is where we start tonight. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 27 News at 6. I'm Mackenzie Davis. And I'm David George. It's been a week since the tragic death of... Right now. 
Well, David McKenzie, there are many questions regarding this case. One of those is why wasn't Zoe Felix removed from her parents' custody? I reached out to DCF to get answers on how that process works. The tragic death of five-year-old Zoe Felix is raising questions about who is to blame. I don't understand. It's just like it was, it was, she was failed. Zoe was failed by the system. The five-year-old girl was raped and murdered last week, not far from a homeless campsite where she was living, after neighbors say she was kicked out of her house, along with her father and sister. A spokesman for the Kansas Department of Children and Family says if a child is determined to be unsafe at home, then DCF can ask the local county or district attorney to petition the court to remove the child from the home. Shawnee County's prosecutor says that never happened in the case of Zoe. Neighbors say despite countless calls to the agency, she wasn't removed. I don't feel like the state did what they were supposed to do. I don't feel like the police department did what they were supposed to do. Um, and I don't feel like her parents did what they should have did either. Some are pointing fingers at DCF. There's been horrific stories of children slipping through the cracks, like seven-year-old Adrian Jones from Kansas City, whose body was fed to pigs in the livestock pen in 2015. Then in 2018, a three-year-old boy's body was found encased in concrete in a Wichita home. Kansas Governor Laura Kelly promised an overhaul of the system when she took office. But Zoe's death is once again prompting concerns. Now, it's unclear whether abuse or neglect has been determined as a cause for Zoe's death. We did put in an open records request last Tuesday. And if this case is found to involve abuse or neglect, the agency has to turn over information within seven days of that being determined, according to state law. For now, reporting live at the Capitol. And this is where I'm going to close this out with this story. And I'm going to just say this. They knew that this was going on since last year at least this baby has been failed since day one i don't understand what kind of an alleged human and let me get the mama's face back up on the screen that's a beautiful little angel man hell i would have raised her myself like i've got kids i'm trying to raise and i just can't stand situations like this if i were a neighbor best believe she would have been calling me dad. She would have been calling me dad because I would have been raising her. That would have been me. I would have been one of those ones. Because... Most of you guys who have been watching me, whether you've been watching me for months or whether you've been watching me for a few years that I've been on YouTube, what is the number one thing that bothers me more than anything? And especially we're coming across Thanksgiving. We're coming across Christmas. If y'all don't know me, y'all know the number one thing that bothers me is when a person can't eat because it's the pure most basic thing that all of us need to be able to do food and water sustenance it's the number one thing that bothers me when people can't eat and can't drink it's more egregious when it's a baby that's in this position right it's more egregious when it's a baby in this position because they depend on us as the adults and as the parents for everything that they get. And the fact that you have this mother who would rather be high and drunk and put her child in a position like this. I don't want to hear about mental illness because the thing is, I continue to keep reminding people that mental illness cannot be an excuse to hurt, harm, murder, or do anything negative to your children. Matter of fact, if you're homeless and you can't take care of yourself, if you can't keep over a roof over your head, you should not be a parent. Why is that not a basic thing? Am I saying something that's hurting people's feelings? I don't really effing know. I really don't. I'll be trying my best not to not to curse on here. I'll really be trying. But I don't understand how I can get people in my in my uh, comment section, not even in the live chat. The people in the live chat are great. AFC is great. 
The problem I have is I'll get these random people in my comment section. They'll say, well, you don't know what the mother was going through. She might be suffering from mental illness. Well, I'm sorry. She looks like Cruella DeVille. Cruella, Cruella DeVille. She's an evil person. She ain't nothing. God, I want to cuss so bad. I'm going to try my best not to. I'm going to try my best not to use any swear words. I'm going to try my best. But the mother is not a mother. She's not human. She didn't care about this child. This has been going on for what we know more than a more than um 12 months. March of 2022. That was more than enough time that this child survived that police should have got off their butts and did something. DCF, you had time to get off your butt and do something. Before this nasty rapist fool was able to get his hands on this baby. Plenty of time. Whether it were hours, whether it were minutes, whether it were days or weeks, they had time to prevent this. To me, that signifies that nobody cared. Nobody cared enough to step in and fix this. That sucks. And I'm going to tell y'all, to be real, when I read this story, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to be able to talk about this. I don't know how I can do this. Because to me, as a father, as a man, any of you guys out there, if y'all are parents, y'all can understand where I'm coming from. And by the, way, that, by the way, that's my favorite picture of her right there. That's my favorite picture of her right there because... Look at how bright she is. Look at how beautiful she is. This baby could have grown up to become anything, and I'm sure she was very, very bright. If she just had an opportunity to have food, have drink, have shelter, clean clothes, and just be able to just do her day-to-day -day business, this baby was going to become something great. And yet we had a nasty pedophile rapist fool who came and stole that. And I hope that if they have the ultimate penalty under law for him, if found that he's guilty of that, by all means, he's a piece of trash in our society that should just be discarded flat out. Zoe, sweetheart, and I'm going to tell you like this, and I'm going to speak to your spirit. I'm sorry I wasn't your neighbor. I'm sorry I wasn't your father, your friend, somebody nearby, somebody close enough that I could have helped, possibly saved you from this situation. And for that, dear princess, I apologize as well as a lot of us do because this baby should not have had to endure this at all. This baby cannot speak for herself, nor could she defend herself against the tyranny of her mother, her father, and the person who ultimately ended up costing her her life. Zoe, may you rest in peace, sweetheart. And I want to get her favorite picture back up here. My favorite picture of her back up here. And why is the mother not arrested? Like, why didn't the mother go into jail? Shouldn't the mom do jail time too? I think so. I think so. Right? Cruella. I think she should do prison time too. I'd say, I don't know. I don't really know what sentence will be appropriate. But young princess, R.I.P. Thank y'all for listening to this story. And please, again, and I use these stories as cautionary tales. As an example, if you see something, say something. If we can step in and save a child's life, I would love to see y'all share those stories. Share them in the comment section. If you've done your due diligence in society, speak on it. Don't be afraid to leave a comment. Let me know. I love to hear those stories. But this shit just should have never have happened. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section, okay? Thank you. When you guys see this picture, y'all know, some of y'all didn't know me and watch me know what I'm going to say. I'm going to try my best not to be disrespectful too early because you might come into this video and you might be like, 
dang, like what did I just walk into? So I have to give you a disclaimer before I tell you guys what this video actually entails. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. Somebody took the words out of my mouth. Y'all are so bad in the chat. Somebody, let me, let me, let me get to it. And that's a beautiful baby boy, by the way. We're going to talk about him. Somebody said that she has a Miss Jane Pittman face. Man, y'all are harsh. Let me see. Does she? Let's see if I can look that up real quick. Oh, that's right. My internet don't hardly want to work. Let me see if I can look it up. Jane Pitt. Man. Oh, whoa. Damn, y'all are mean. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Damn. So is she the younger Miss Jane Pittman or the older one? Whoa. Oh my God. Somebody did the Jordan meme on her face. Lord, you know what? God bless y'all chat. <laughs> y'all are not going to believe this. I don't know if this is a real picture or not. I have some of the baddest chat members in the world. <coughs> y'all are so bad. Are y'all saying that that's Miss Jade Pittman? <laughs> Good Lord. We are going sh on a fast track to hell the way that we're going right now. Is that really Miss Jane Pittman? My goodness. Is that her? <laughs> I guess I could see the resemblance. I could see it. <laughs> I could see it. But I'm just saying, I'm going to leave that to you guys. Look, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read the news story. I'm getting this from lawandcrime.com. So thank you guys so much for the article. When y'all hear what she did, you're not going to feel bad about her. It's going to make you wish that you were blind so you didn't have eyes to see her face. Why her face looks like somebody, I don't know, drug her and like flung her through a cactus face first. Damn. Boy, she just got one of those fugitive on the run looking faces, man. <laughs> Golly. Anyway, <coughs> this woman is allegedly 36 years old from Missouri and was arrested in Florida this week after she allegedly strangled her eight-year-old son to death in the backseat of her car. Then, while the boy's lifeless body was still in the vehicle, y'all brace yourselves, while this boy's dead body was in the vehicle, she drove around to various locations so she could continue to run her errands. And that's the baby. And I'm going to tell you guys, his picture was very hard to find. So I want to thank the family so at least we can pay homage to the individual that we're talking about. Because otherwise, it's just kind of like we don't really have that image in our head. But that's the boy that we're talking about in this story. And I think I had a couple of pictures of him. So those are a couple. Good looking, handsome young kid. This boy could have grown up to become anything. And he looks like he's a really good kid too. And, and in my opinion, an evil person would do something like this if they were jealous of this boy that he probably was going to grow up to become something great and his mama didn't grow up to become nothing. 
she drove around with this dead boy's body in the car like ain't nothing going on. That person. Shanika Ann McKenzie was taken into custody on Tuesday and later charged with first with one count of first degree domestic violence murder in the slaying of young Jason Burgos, authorities announced. And his name is spelled J-A-I-S-Y-N. Because, of course, we're going to have his name spelled in a very unique way. But I'm not mad at it. I do like the name. But his name is Jason Burgos, B-U-R-G-O-S. According to an arrest <clears throat> report obtained by Law and Crime, officers with the Miami-Dade Police Department on Tuesday responded to the Hylia Hospital after McKenzie, the mother, allegedly showed up at the facility with her son's lifeless body. A subsequent autopsy performed by the Miami-Dade Medical Examiner's Office determined that the boy's manner of death was caused by homicide and the, and the cause of death was asphyxiation. Officers transported the mother McKenzie to the department's homicide bureau where she was read her Miranda rights and then agreed to give a taped confession, police wrote. McKenzie allegedly told investigators that she had been planning to kill the victim and thinking of doing it for the past two days before she decided to finally go through with the horrific killing. That makes it premeditated. That is a first degree murder charge that in some states could get you the death penalty for a first degree murder charge. If nothing else, life in prison. While the victim was asleep in the rear passenger seat, the little boy was asleep in the backseat of his mom's car. The mother McKenzie utilized a black tablecloth tablecloth to suffocate and strangle her son. Moments later, when the victim stopped struggling and was rendered unconscious, the mother, the defendant, released the tablecloth. Next, she proceeded to conduct several errands throughout the Miami-Dade County. So she just went and ran her errands like nothing else happened. Several hours after she allegedly killed her son, McKenzie said that she drove her son to Hylia Hospital, where she was arrested. It's very difficult to wrap your hand around how a parent could not only plan the murder of their child, but then carry out this murder and then go about their day as if nothing happened. To drive around with their child's lifeless body and complete various errands as if nothing happened is unimaginable. Detective Martin did not speculate as to the possible motive for the alleged uh, homicide. I think that's what they meant. Philip Philicide, I guess. What is that? I don't know what that is. I'm not going to act like I do. Hold on. Filicide. Or how, how do you say it? Filicide. Filicide. The killing of one's son or daughter. So there you go. They're still, or they're still investigating to determine a possible motive. <coughs> the Miami-Dade Circuit Judge Mindy S. Glazer, who oversaw McKenzie's first court appearance, shared a similar sentiment. I believe in the arrest affidavit that there's a probable cause for the charge of first degree murder. Miss McKenzie confessed, Judge Glazer said, in a courtroom footage provided by Miami-Dade affiliate WSVM. She killed her child, so I'm holding her with no bond. McKenzie is currently being held at the Turner Gulliver Knight Correctional Center. Orlando NBC affiliate WESH reported that McKenzie was homeless and had been staring, staying in various motels in the Miami area for the last couple of months since moving to Missouri. The victim's father died in an accident when his son was about a year old. So for those wondering where the biological father is, he's deceased. Authorities are urging anybody with relevant information about this case to call Miami-Dade County Crime Stoppers at 305-471-8477. Let me give you guys the fair usage and then I'll give you guys my thoughts and opinions about this. So, here we go.
Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And for the people who are watching, if you'll do me a favor and please click that thumbs up and share this video, please help us share it. Hit that thumbs up. Here we go. Facing serious charges tonight, accused of the unthinkable. Police say she confessed to killing her own son. Shanika McKenzie is charged with first degree murder. According to her arrest report, police say she waited until her eight year old son was asleep and then suffocated him with a tablecloth until he stopped fighting back. Police say McKenzie then proceeded to conduct several errands throughout Miami Dade County. She did not drive him to the hospital until several hours later. McKenzie appeared in bond court earlier this afternoon. She is being held without bond. Now to a disturbing case out of Hialeah, an eight-year-old strangled to death and then taken to the hospital. Tonight, police say the child's mother is behind bars for the gruesome murder. NBC6 reporter Christian Colon is outside the Miami-Dade Police Headquarters with the details. Police say the little boy was strangled with a tablecloth in the back of a car. The alleged killer, his mother. Jason Burgos killed in the hands of his mother, the eight-year-old victim seen in this picture with his father when he was a couple of months old. She killed her child, so I'm holding it with no bond. The mother, Shanika McKenzie, arrested after driving the lifeless body at Hialeah Hospital. She explained that she fulfilled this plan by taking a tablecloth, utilizing a tablecloth to strangle and suffocate this child this innocent child while he was in the back seat of her vehicle. Mackenzie allegedly confessed she was working on a murder plan for two days. Then on Tuesday, records show while the victim was asleep in the rear passenger seat, she utilized a black tablecloth to suffocate and strangle the victim. It's very difficult to wrap your head around how a parent could not only plan to murder their child, but then after carrying out this murder, uh, go on about their day as if nothing happened to drive around with your child's lifeless body and um, complete various errands uh, as if nothing ever happened. It, it's, it's unimaginable. Police say McKenzie moved from Missouri to Miami-Dade and was homeless. She drove around, lived in hotels or inside a car. The child was not even attending school. As for the child's father, family members tell NBC6 he died from an accident when Jason was about a year old. And police say they have been in touch with the defendant's family. As for the defendant herself, she's at TGK. We're at police headquarters. Christian Colon, NBC6 News. Good afternoon, Ms. McKenzie. You were arrested for one count of first degree murder. I will appoint the public defender's office for you. <coughs> Ms. Corey, we are voting Ms. McKenzie's right to counsel and her right to make to remain silent. All right, so I've reviewed the arrest affidavit. There is probable cause for the charge of first degree murder. She killed her child. So I'm holding you with no bond. Good day, ma'am. I think that's pretty much the end of that. <clears throat> it was kind of an awkward silence at the end of that. But for those who are asking, does Florida have the death penalty? And I Google searched it and it says that capital punishment is a legal penalty in the U.S. state of Florida. The execution chamber 
in Florida, in, in, uh, Florida State Prison since 1976, the state has executed 105 convicted murderers, all at Florida State Prison. As of September 6th of 2023, 292 offenders are awaiting execution. So it's very, very possible with a first-degree murder charge, that's exactly what her fate could end up being, sitting on death row. But I think even death isn't a suitable punishment. The only punishment that's really suitable is for what happened to their child, for that to happen to them. And even then, it still shouldn't happen to the kid. It's not going to bring them back. And we've lost a soul that was a very bright kid that could have grown up to become something great. His father's legacy and his father passed away tragically. So we don't know really what the full potential of his father's life could have been. But this young man had a lot of potential. Bright, good-looking young kid that could have been anything. And his life was robbed for no reason. Like if the mom didn't want to be a mom, she didn't have to be a mom. And that's just simple. So why she will plan this is just beyond me. So maybe when we get a motive, it'll just give us more of an idea about what caused this. But to this young soul, let me see if I can back that picture up. I think that one, like, like I don't know why he looks so different in those pictures, but this is definitely the same kid. Definitely the same kid. Jason Burgos, Young Prince, RIP. So I thank the family for stepping up and speaking out uh, for what they're doing. And I hope that they absolutely get justice for this young man. Because that woman is just a hideous, hideous person and never needs to see the light of day. And just some people don't need to be in our society I don't care what their mental issue is. They just need to go. They present a danger to everybody, okay? Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. If you have more to add to this, I think I pretty much covered everything, including what the potential punishment is for the death penalty. And I don't think I have any screenshots. Let me make sure. I do, but it's stuff we've already talked about. But thank you guys so much for listening to the story.